Hey guys, welcome to the Rubin Report. Contrary to reports on CNN, I am not juror B37. I am Dave Rubin. And we've got two great comedians with us this week, Kira Sultanovich and Jimmy Dore, both repeat guests on the Rubin Report. And uh, yes, it's not easy, it's are. not easy to do that. I never know what you're gonna say. Two, <laughs> two time repeat guests, that's right. All right, we got a lot to talk about, so let's uh, roll. Twitter, I love Twitter, full disclosure, addicted to Twitter, never want to say anything bad about Twitter, but I'm a little, uh, a little displeased with the Twitter people this week because uh, there is a lawsuit in France. You know, France has strict hate speech laws. You can't deny the Holocaust. Uh, they don't want people putting up pure hate speech, anti-Semitic stuff, anti-Muslim stuff, blah, blah, blah. And now the French government is cooperating with Twitter, or Twitter is cooperating with the French government, I should say, uh, to per prosecute, persecute? Uh, people uh, who are putting up hate speech on Twitter. That was the oddest, uh, most roundabout logic intro I've ever given to a segment. <laughs> Guys, we're all comedians. We love free speech. Not every, not every country has it the way we have it here in America. Uh, but is this bad news that Twitter would cooperate with a government to stop people from saying what they want to say in the social media sphere? Kira, go. Is it because I'm a Jew? Let's Jew. Start, start Take with it the away, Jew. Jew. Yeah. If you can't be anti-Semitic on Twitter, <laughs> then what is the point? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's the like, last sphere where it's you the can... last place where it's yeah. like, ah, Jews, you cheap bastards, <laughs> right? It's the last place to do that in 140 characters or less. Yeah. I um look, I, I there are a lot of complaints I have about the French. And uh, if they want to lock down those anti-Semites, then that's their business. I feel like it sh we, we should, uh, as because Twitter is based out of here, California, I feel like we almost have responsibility, right? right. Silicon Valley, that's right. I grew up in San Francisco. If, if that's what the government is saying, this is what we hold true in our government, I feel like maybe they should uphold that. I don't know, I, I just, right. but then again, I also feel like a Jew joke is pretty funny usually. It's generally funny. Now, Twitter did open offices in France recently, so they do have other legal obligations. Ah, now it's not okay. just that, that Twitter's here. Jimmy, comedian, we all, free speech, we always back it, but Kira's, Kira's down with uh, what the French are doing. I didn't know any of this stuff about France, and it's so, so funny, when you started talking about this, I'm like, oh, I just read a story about this. I'm like, oh, that's right, because you said it to I me. sent it <laughs> to you. That was me yesterday <laughs> sending you the email on that, yeah. Jimmy just time traveled. Yeah. So he just <laughs> got to yesterday. For the, for the record, uh, one camera here, for the record, Jimmy strolled in 10 seconds ago with a banana and a traveling bag, like literally like a comedian, like you were gonna throw a banana peel, and then where's your rubber chicken, dude? Uh, there's no coffee today for some reason. And there's no coffee here. Anyway, I'll just say it seems like, you know, France is, uh, I didn't know that you could police speech like that. Like you can't, you can't be mean to someone or you can't be disparaging. Right. But that's just funny to me. And I think it's because, you know, they're overcompensating, obviously, the French. because they small penises. Because they're small, <laughs> they're small penises. penises. Right. right. And, for, yeah. for the, and they stink, the penises. They don't put deodorant on them. Yeah. What? And, uh, and they're always, always smoking and yeah. they're depressed. Yeah, but yeah, But it's yeah. because they sent the Jews to, uh, you know, work in concentration camp or, you know, they sent them away. They made yeah. a deal with Hitler. And, so they've had that guilty conscience now mm -hmm. ever since then. So, but we don't have that here in America, right? Uh, in fact, we should, we don't have one. You can say whatever you want on Twitter about anybody, right? right. American Indians, African Americans, that doesn't matter. Particularly uh, if you're Alec Baldwin. American Indians, th those, those are oh. the worst. <laughs> I can't take them. Yeah. I am all for you know free speech, obviously, for our country, but I do feel like um, if the, the people of France then all of a sudden will go to Twitter to jump on the Jew bandwagon, well, it's more of a train, yeah. but you know what I mean? Like if they jump on it, then I, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm torn by this because as a comic, I do believe in free speech, right. but. You're now, I should say really though. Torn? I really am, oh. because let's, let's, let's go the opposite way because okay. we do have free speech, right? Yes. right. What if um, there was some social network out of, uh, I don't know, the Middle East somewhere that we all jumped on, we were like, I love, <laughs> it's so great to put pictures on that, but then they start, you know, uh, um, take, a, take a look at right. our picture. So, okay, it so could that, happen. Come on. It could happen. But you're not really, you're not, you don't think this is a good thing that you can't say what you want publicly. I think, no, for us. Yeah, Because we do in our country. Yeah, but in France, France it's bad. Right, well, no, the thing I is, we, bad, have, we have the First Amendment here. I mean, that's an American thing. Everyone right. thinks, oh, everybody has the First Amendment. No. But, no, but it's actually just an American thing that it's was right. in our Even Bill Canada of Rights. doesn't have it, eh? Yeah, eh? That's yes. right. Uh, but I think you're onto something about, you know, the Arab Spring. Look, if, if the government uh, were working with Twitter to stop the tweets coming out of Tahrir Square, then they probably wouldn't have had 
the revolution last year or the revolution yes. last week. Yes. So is, is that the real danger? That sure, it may seem okay at first that you you know you quiet up some people that are spewing hate, but then ultimately you get people. I don't think them. you know. I think it's like a bubble, you know, or a balloon. You squeeze it here, it go, expands there, and you can't. It's just like pornography. You know, the more you try to push it down, the darker it gets, and the more. It, it pervasive. So uh, this is, I understand, like, again, I understand their guilty conscience. I was shocked that Twitter rolled over like this for them. Yeah. They rolled over pretty easily. They could have fought back harder. And it makes me nervous now. You know, like I have friends who just uh, drop their Facebook accounts because they're sick and tired. I'm sick and tired of it. You go to a Huffington Post or any website mm -hmm. and all of a sudden they know who you are and what you've been doing and here's what you're reading. And here's an ad because you were looking for that thing on Amazon yesterday. And I'm like, what the that, is going on? Yeah, so wait, actually, let's take a look at some, uh, some stats, some Twitter stats, who they're working with, and uh, then we can talk about why. So in terms of censorship, in the second half of 2012, Twitter received over 1,000 requests from government agencies in the US and abroad. It complied to varying degrees. 69% yeah. uh, of the time with respect to requests from American authorities, so that's, that's pretty high. 33% uh, from the Dutch, and never in cases of countries like India, Israel, or Turkey. Uh, but 70% of the time, they're doing stuff that the US government wants. Now, we are in the US here, does that make you a little nervous? We don't know what they're doing. We don't know what the government's doing. It makes me right? nervous. Yes, I don't like that. I don't like that. It's ridiculous. Yes, I don't like social networks can, you know, working with the government. Stop. If the government, if you, uh, you know, do you make, does that make you uncomfortable? Yes, it's super yeah, uncomfortable. I, you guys see well, how much I tweet. I put a ton of stuff yes, out there. But then the thing is with Twitter, it's a thank you. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> Uh, but Twitter, the thing is with Twitter, it is all public. It's not like what you're saying with Facebook, where like if you go to Huffington Post and then suddenly it magically appears on your Facebook. Right. Twitter, we all know that everything we say is, is that we're putting it out. So the issue here is about anonymity, right? Because if you were saying something particularly hateful anonymously, you know what I mean? It's not like yes. you know what, you put something out right. and it has your name attached to it, versus if you were trying to fight the government anonymously. Right. right. You know. Well, I have a couple of those pages. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to know so this, about so that. These yeah. were anonymous people who were doing it and not clandestinely yeah. tweeting anti-Semitic stuff in France. Yes. And so Twitter said, I'll let you know who these guys are. Right. And it's not just anti-Semitic stuff, it's anti-Muslim stuff. It's just, it's pure have? hate, basically. So what could they be, but, you know, the thing is we don't know what those things were that the government requested right. from Twitter and what Twitter gave them. So what the, what the, like you said, it is public, so what the fuck are they requesting, right? Right, it's a little, it's a little bizarre. Anyway, uh, Twitter, I just want to say to you personally, I still love you, and uh, you know, we'll keep doing this, and you, you gotta do what you gotta do, I guess. All right, uh, let's move on. Oh, so this, uh, Jimmy, I know you're gonna have a field day with okay, this one. Sure what? One of the worst programs in the history of television is oh. coming back on CNN. Oh. Crossfire, which ran on CNN from 1982 to 2005, which was basically a partisan hack on the left versus a partisan hack on the right, screaming at each other, which then led to all the bipolar dysfunction we have in politics. Now, is coming back to CNN. And uh, before we get into it, let's watch. This is just a couple days before they canceled the original Crossfire. Jon Stewart went on there and uh, laid in to the hosts. It, it, in, in many ways, it's funny, you know, and, and I, I made a special effort to come on the show today because I have uh, privately amongst my friends and also in occasional newspapers and television shows <laughs> mentioned uh, this show as being uh, uh, bad. <laughs> And, and, and I wanted to, I felt that that wasn't fair and I should come here and, and tell you that I don't, it's not so much that it's bad as it's hurting America. <laughs> no, no, it, how old are you? 35. And you wear a bow tie. Yeah, I do. I do. So, when you have people on for just knee-jerk, reactionary talk... Wait, I thought you were going to be funny. Come on, be funny. No, no, I'm not going to be your monkey. Um, <laughs> what, what? I watch your show every day, and it kills me. I can tell you a lot. It's it. so, oh, it's so painful to watch. Um, you know, because we need what you do. This is such a great opportunity you have here to actually get politicians really off Stewart? of what their marketing anyway? and strategy. Yeah, it's someone who watches your show and cannot take it anymore. Okay, so I'm pretty sure Crossfire was canceled the next day. They ended up running it for a few more weeks. But every, John Stewart hit that. That was, you know, about seven, eight years ago. And everything that's wrong with our political system is summed up in that CNN's ratings are tanking, and then the new guy, Jeff Zucker, comes in and he's bringing back just the <laughs> worst kind of awful with Newt Gingrich and S.C. Cup hacking on one side and Van Jones and uh, Stephanie Cutter on the other side. First of all, the fact that Newt is leaving Fox 
Yeah. I feel like CNN is like that dorky AV club table in high school. You know what I mean? And then the bully from the Fox yes. table is like, he's gonna come and sit at our table. Yeah. You guys, you guys, yes. you guys, let's impress him. Let's do it, let's do it. Come on, he's gonna come over. And then here comes Newt. <laughs> who he doesn't really think you're his friends, right? But for some reason he's leaving Fox, so that's suspicious. Why? Why all of a sudden right, right. is Newt Gingrich leaving to go to CNN to start Crossfire yeah. again? And the funny thing is, with Newt particularly, not to, I mean this is going to be the most tepid endorsement of Newt ever, but they made him out to be the biggest joke when he was running. All the networks did. Yeah. So now to bring him on as if as if he's some genius, whether, whether people like him or not, is, is kind of disingenuous by CNN. But what do you think about this? I, I mean, the reason I'm doing this show is because I want to show relatively smart people, yourselves included, oh. talking about issues, not just screaming with prepackaged talking points. And that's, it's the last thing we need. Uh, it's nice to see CNN reaching out in a time when Paula Dean is losing all her shows and her empire because of her <laughs> racism. They're, give, they're rewarding uh, certain other racists, like Newt Gingrich, who's a blatant racist. Yeah. Uh, uh, and also NBC is still rewarding Donald Trump with a racist show. So Newt Gingrich, if you're telling me that uh, calling this, the President Barack Obama the food stamp president is not race baiting in the worst form, then uh, you're dumb. Right. Uh, that's why so we're smarter co it's than you. Words. It's code words, <laughs> you're right? You're a liar, you're, yeah. you're and disingenuous. it's disrespectful for people who collect real stamps. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, think about all those people. There's like dozens of them. Yeah, those people have to be uh, really upset. You know, he also accused Juan Williams of not knowing what work was about. Juan Williams, a guy who at the time held three jobs. Yeah. Not no. So that's just again. It's and and then. But Juan Williams, as far as I'm concerned, he's one of those guys who goes over to the bully table. Yeah, yeah. And now you got it coming. Yeah. When you ask Newt Gingrich to stop race baiting in a room full of Fox viewers, they're gonna boo you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's gonna happen. That's a good point about Juan Williams because yeah. he, he did the reverse of what you're saying. He went, he went to the to yes. the cooler table and right. said, you know, I'm not one of you guys on right. Fox News, and here I am, and I'm gonna fight. Uh, but do you guys think that part of this has to do with the human brain? I'm, I'm starting to think this. Yes. That we have two halves of the human brain. We don't have seven halves, because that would be mathematically impossible. Oh. And our brains are constantly fighting with each other. And because of that, everything is now man versus woman, black versus white, right versus left. So that by putting up a show like this, they, they're just feeding into something that's just wired into us, this constant battle of two Can I, can two I say what we're wired, it's wired into, if I mind me step on you a second. Don't ever touch me again. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> You're so pretty. Man versus woman. <laughs> yeah, there can you I go. Can I fill out paperwork? I we'll get you. I didn't mean Thank it. You. I didn't Thank mean you. it. Do anyway, it. but uh, um, <laughs> I think of what it does, it, feels, it, it uh, feeds into this notion that everything's equal on both sides, this false equivalency. Yeah. Oh, there's blowhards on the right, there's blowhards on the left. When in reality, one party, we're only left with two parties really in America, one party has gone batshit crazy over the last 20 years to the point where it's unrecognizable, right. yet they still keep reporting it as if it's the same equal to, even the left has shifted to the right. So the uh, uh, Repu mainstream Republicans are upset that their party has shifted to the right, and Democrats are upset that their party has shifted to the right, yet the, news, the mainstream news media reports it as if it's exactly the same as it was 20 years ago. Yeah. I think you are right about the, the, the two sides. I feel like everything now politically is push-pull. You know what I mean? So if we push this way, they want to pull the exact same. So even if, if um, you know, like, have you ever been water skiing? You, ever, you know water skiing? Yes. Okay. So if you, if you feel kind of like iffy on the water, right, and you pull yourself to keep yourself up, what is automatically going to happen, just the physics of it, is that you're going to pull the same distance and you're going to fall off your water skis. That's what's happening all the time politically now is people get so upset about nothing because they feel they have to be. If someone is passionate about something like, I don't know, let's say um, equality for gays, right? right? A civil equality we should all have. People who really could kind of care less or like, ah, eh, whatever, doesn't bother me. But because they feel that they're Republicans and all of a sudden, you know, my party is being, you know, somehow like, we're we're yeah. being attacked, they pull even further. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? When really, you're not that angry about it. It doesn't really affect your everyday life. Yeah. Why do you really care so much? But they feel that push-pull, and so you're right, it's always these two halves that now they're equally upset about something that they're not really upset yeah. about. And you know what, it's funny because Bill Maher said what both of you were saying, he's been saying this for years, that the right keeps going so far right, and the left, because they're such a bunch of dogs basically, they just follow along yes. with the leash. So what we used to think was the middle yes. is actually much further 
it right, really got, it, it really got uh, accelerated during Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton's you know, triangulation was, I'll take all these Republican issues and I'll uh, make them Democrat issues now. And no, no, now you're not a Democrat anymore. Yeah. And so now it's the shift to the right. And it, again, it's just being reported as if it's still the two, two different, a liberal and a conservative party when we have a conservative and a more conservative party. Uh, yeah, so okay, so with all this drivel, almost every week on the show we've talked about cable news and how it's doing such a disservice. And Jimmy, you have a show on the Young Turks Network as well. And I think this is one of the few places where and of course it's online, which is why we're free and we yes. can speak our minds and all that stuff. Um, but is the, is the mainstream media, is it really just dead between we know, you know MSNBC now is as bad one way as Fox is the other, and if CNN is just gonna give us the screaming, is it, is it really just over? And that may really just be good for people like us who are creating content on the internet. I think news should go back to one hour a night. That's it, one show, one hour. I think it just should go back, here's what happened today. Uh -huh. Yeah. And that's it, the 24 hour news cycle has destroyed everything. Yeah. And it's not really a 24 hour news cycle, it's like every it, three hours it just regurgitates itself. Totally, everyone says 24 hours, but it's actually not. they're just saying the same thing on repeat eight times, yeah, three hours been, a day. If you're a comic and you've ever been stuck in an airport because your flight's delayed <laughs> for four hours yeah. watching the news in the airport, yes. you know, Oh, we're just going right back to what we were two hours ago. Yes. And I really feel like if we just, just try, let's just try it. I say the big news corp, just try it. Yeah, I agree. Just a week, let's do a little experiment. Yeah. Where we just report the news like we used to. When I was a kid, my parents watched the news at night. It was an hour long and that was it. Lights yeah. out, we're going to bed. So, so last thought on this. Do you think part of the problem also is that because of these freaking trials that they, there's nothing more purely drivelous than to put a trial on for eight hours a day to watch the minutia of what goes on in a court. So they've been doing that now for weeks, mm -hmm. and of course we're gonna have weeks more now of analysis. Yeah. But remember, didn't wasn't uh, North Korea gonna nuke us a month ago? Wasn't there gonna be, well, there were chemical weapons in Syria? Egypt was having a revolution, I think, a few days ago. Does anyone know about any of that? Like, no, I guess all that stuff just worked out, right? The they sponsors must want you to talk about the trial. Do they really? Yeah. Are these sponsors just they are the ones That's the that problem with the 24 hour news cycles, they only take one hour and devote it to news and the other right. 23 is bullshit. Yeah. Right. And if they actually took that time and did investigative reports and you know uh, documentaries and things, yeah, that would be great. But of course they're not going to do that. It's dribble, dribble, dribble because it's the People magazine mentality of television right now. Look at CNN, it's a joke. Yeah. Jeff Stucker, his big idea is to bring back the shittiest show they <laughs> ever fucking had. Yeah. That's his idea. Have you watched Erin Burnett? My Babysitter has more depth than her. Although it's you unbelievable how. Do you have a child? Thinner than a. No, that's how thin. <laughs> Why did that That babysitter was an unnecessary shot at your babysitter. Yeah. It, oh, that's uh, it's weird. unbelievable what's happened yeah. to the main. And you know what? You, you, you talk about MSNBC kind of being the mirror of Fox. They're not. MSNBC still informs you, whereas Fox actively misinforms their viewers on purpose. They lie to their own viewers on purpose. They've been caught many times. It happens all the time now. It's not even worth pointing it out. But what MSNBC does is too often the mainstream, whatever the opinion is, they're against Edward Snowden at MSNBC. Yeah. They're for drone strikes. Yeah. They're so that's where their problem. The problem is that MSNBC has is the same problem our political system has, is it's one party. Right, you just have to latch on to the administration because that's their guy yes. and that's it. All right, think, last thought. Do you think Crossfire's coming back because we have an election in a couple of years? I think it's coming back purely because of this of state ideas. of it's, yeah, really? they're, they're out of, out I, of I think ideas. they're afraid. I think truly is that the networks are afraid to put on people that are intellectually honest. Mm -hmm. I think that's the truth. You can watch Hannity say the same things that he hated about the NSA when, yes. or that he loved when Bush was yeah. president. And then there's a great video on YouTube, we played it on the show, and then now he hates it because it's Obama. And I think they're afraid of just showing honest people mm -hmm. having, or at least some degree of intellectual honesty. It has nothing to do with television. And okay. I'm um, glad we're all honest. Thank yeah. God for that. All right, let's move on to something a little happier. I think this is actually a great story. San Diego is about to become mm. the second uh, city in the country that is banning dogs being sold from puppy mills, so you won't be able to go to your pet store and get you know that special breed that you've really wanted. Uh, and instead, you're going to have to save an animal's life uh, by going to a shelter. And there are a zillion great animals out there. My dog is a rescue from Hurricane Katrina after 
uh, in New Orleans, and she is nice? the love of my oh, life. Oh, no, I just, I love you uh, 10 times more now look than at I that. did before. Oh, she gave birth during the hurricane, oh. nursed her puppies to health, and then came up here, oh. and uh, she's, a, she's a great dog. Anyway, I think this is just fantastic. I see no downside to this, but of course, you know, some people are going to scream about free market, and you know, if people want to buy dogs, they should be allowed to. Do you guys see any badness to this? It seems to me you're, you're actually saving two lives because of an unnecessary birth you know, just through the puppy mill, and you're saving a dog that's most likely going to be put down. But what are you saying? Shelter. Are you saying we have to wait for a hurricane to get our shelter dogs? That, <laughs> no, you can go. God right. forbid we have that to do a that. A, a tornado dog. Could okay. be a tornado. Yeah. I feel like we need to change the words puppy mill because that just sounds adorable. It it's does. Like, yeah. I want to go to the puppy mill. It sounds right. like an yeah. outlet. You know when you drive into to Vegas funny. or to Palm Springs, those outlets on the way in the desert? Yeah. <gasps> Let's stop with the puppy mill. Yeah. We'll go to the pepper mill. Yeah, the like, pepper <laughs> mill, the puppy mill, or something adorable, right. like, you know. Like I, you could roll around with a bunch of puppies yes. in the puppy well, mill. Well, like it's yeah. uh, one of the holes at like mini golf. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you guys, hole in one at the puppy mill. <laughs> you know, it just sounds too cute. We need to, first yes. of all, just stop that. We need to call it like the kitten torture, torture chamber. Yeah. The rack, the, the puppy rack. The pu yeah. Yes. The puppy Which is next to the North fisting, yeah, the puppy there. fisting factory. Puppy. Something <laughs> awful where people go, of puppy. course we should get rid of a puppy fisting factory. That's not even a question. That sounds like a punk band from the 90s, that doesn't would it? That be puppy fisting. pending, don't you steal yeah, the puppy. Some of the puppies will like it. Anyway, oh, those, dirty, <laughs> well, those know, Dobermans. But you can't punish all of them because of the few That's freaks. Right. right, that's not how we're gonna... That's number one, let's stop using that term. Yeah. And then I think more people will buy them from a rescue place. Well, you don't yeah. buy them, you just pick them up. You just pick them up. I, that's what I meant. Yeah. I, but I wanna donate money. But you wanna donate money because yeah. you're a good one. No, you know, I'm yeah. a dog person. Yeah. Uh, you know that, I my dog, I, I love, I don't trust people who don't like dogs. You ever meet those people? Oh. Yes. Who doesn't like dogs? But I don't like cats. Do you trust me still? Yes, I don't trust cats. Yeah, cats I don't like cats douches. either. Yeah, they are douches. Freaking, but, so a cat mill, go for yeah. it, America. Yeah, exactly. But I do, I, do I, uh, um, I wish my dog could talk. Why can't they talk? God damn it. They know what you're saying. They're just like the Viet Cong. Yeah. My point is, <laughs> my point is, uh, yes, it's a good idea. I just got my dog from a, from a uh, shelter. Mm -hmm. And yes, why can't they can say, don't buy from a, you have to go to a licensed breeder and make sure. How about we just go to the frickin' pound? There's a hundred dogs yeah. there. Yeah. Go there and get your goddamn dog. Yeah. What do you think about these people that'll say, the free market, though, if people want to buy it, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> what, what do I say about them? They're idiots. They're just the idiots. They, they don't right. understand the problem, and every problem can't be solved by the free market. Yeah. Right? If it was... If it could be, we wouldn't have health care problems. If it could be, we wouldn't have lots of other things. But yes, not every problem is fixable by the free market. Yeah. Why are purebred dogs such an awesome thing to have? I think it's just an elitist thing because actually yes. they're proven to not even be they're as not, healthy. No, they get mutts, joint problems. They all the, yeah, all yeah. are the best. Yeah. Yes. When you mix breeds yes. and, and you know, two dogs are getting it on in an alley somewhere in West, West Covina. That's yeah. where that the is, cute that dogs is. come That's where they're from. making the next generation's yes. uh, dog Olympians yeah. right there yeah. in that alley in West Covina. You yeah. know, it's funny though, because the, actually those dogs have to survive. If you found a dog that, you know, came out of a, a, a mill, it's been hopefully coddled. treated, it's been coddled, even if it's not a good mill, yeah. it's been brought up in, you know, it was just brought up and raised just to be adopted. Another dog had to survive. And if a dog has to survive, it's gonna get some innate good qualities. I think my dog has like a, a yeah. particular sweetness to humans because they saved her mm -hmm. and now she... My, uh, my dog is afraid of hallways. So it's different, it's a little different. <laughs> I don't know what that is yeah, about. Is he's that? always afraid, he's, he's like ducks well, and anything runs. anything happen in a hallway. So yeah, I don't know what happened. Yeah. But, uh, but he was really skinny when we got him. You could see his, every spine, you could see his vertebra and his ribs. And yeah. I thought it was cute. I'm like, oh look, he's skinny, he's a skinny guy. That's no, he you live in LA, <laughs> you're in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh, I'm not gonna yeah. have carbs for the rest of the day. Thanks like, a lot. Yeah. My dog has abs. Does nice. your dog have that? He would do really well in West Hollywood. Yeah, he's fantastic. Sure. Yeah. All right, well, okay, so we're all agreed on this. Easy well, segment, there yeah, you go. The and world. if you want to adopt a dog, uh, check out talesofjoy.net. Our former guest, Elaine Boozler, runs a uh, really? puppy rescue situation and she can connect you with some great dogs. Okay, let's move on to porn. We can't do a week without porn. Uh, there is a man from Tennessee. Uh, he's a lawyer, actually, and he's suing Apple because he says its products are causing him to be unable to have sex with his wife because of all the porn and his wife is no longer 21 and he's seeing all these hot young 
checks on, uh, on the porn on his Apple devices. So he's suing Apple, which actually seems completely insane right. to me. Uh, he argues that they should come with a safe mode so that he isn't constantly tempted to watch porn because you know if you have it on your phone and then on your iPad and then on your MacBook, it's, it's just always there and it's coming for you. Is this the most ridiculous thing you have ever heard? It makes perfect sense. <laughs> you like this It one. makes 100% sense. Yeah. Absolutely, you should sue Apple. You should sue everybody. <laughs> sue everybody. Sue the world. Just start handing out lawsuits. By the way, is John Grisham all over this guy from Tennessee? <laughs> Aren't all Grisham novels a lawyer from Tennessee? Yeah. Yeah, well we know how those end up. Tom Cruise running, okay? There's a lot of running. So, uh, sue Tom Cruise. Uh, no, I think this is, a, I think most Americans um, probably live their lives like this, where they sue Snickers because it didn't really satisfy, you know, yeah. to give them diabetes. Yeah. So you should, yeah, I'm gonna sue those people where the woman's having an orgasm in the shower because she's washing her hair, uh -huh. because I have tried over Never. and over. I've used the bottle the right way, nothing. And your, nothing. Hair, your hair looks luscious. Thank you, though, but no it? orgasm. No orgasm. Sue. I've Sue. checked my wife's head, I can't find her clit anywhere. <laughs> you gotta <laughs> really look, you gotta left and then make a, make a right. What are we talking about? Porn, well, the Apple porn. So oh, he's suing oh. Apple. So oh, that's that, right. Uh, the guy I can't suing Apple. You use the C word so early in the morning. Oh, you can, <laughs> thank you. You can say clip. But I'm suing. I uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I've been diagnosed. I'm a chronic masturbator, and I'm suing Astroglide for making my dick too irresistible when it's all glistened up like I'm that. So right. Sorry. So I can't keep my hands off myself, and that's not my fault. It's no, it's not. definitely not. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so suing my brave. parents. I'm suing my parents for yeah. making for me. Don't don't you have a penis? Don't rub him right now because he's all worked out. I could go off. Out like that yeah. and talk about your disease. Where did you uh, catch it? Uh, um, yeah, I caught it a lot. I caught it at a uh, bathhouse on a goof, what? and that's why you got to be goof? careful. You got to be careful. You know when. You never know when you're gonna catch you that. You never know. Yeah. But, uh, but is he suing the wrong people? That's the point. It's yes. like you're suing Apple. That's just the device. First uh, of all, why is there a lawsuit anywhere? Right. Okay. So that's getting like past the ridiculous. It's, like, it's not that's the like wrong people. the guy who makes the door on the strip club. That guy, <laughs> that door, let me go in. Right. I could. I should have been a lock brick and on it. Yeah. I would be yeah. like, well, I can't get in. I guess yeah. I'll go yeah. have sex with my wife. So is there? Should he sue the porn companies then? Is there any legitimacy yeah. to this? Any? Because we look, there is a ton of porn access. We can all get it at all times. And uh, is there any? I think the three of us sue him for yeah. having to talk for about this just being an idiot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I think just, that's a more plausible lawsuit. That's just a guy who doesn't have the balls to admit to his wife. You know, like, yeah, um, I'm over you, and I'm. I'm he presents because of the porn, honey. Look, it's I'm like, sure he's no prize either. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. I'm sure. These guys that check out porn, they're about 3,000 pounds overweight. Not that I'm saying you're not sexy if you're fat, but I'm just saying they're right. usually not like best of health, not a great person. Maybe you don't have charisma. I'm not saying everybody oh, that really? looks at porn. Is that a, is that no, a, but when you start happy. to when you start to say I'm mad because my wife doesn't look like this, it's right. usually you're not. Prince Charming yourself. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Like these guys, for example, I'm, you know, chick on the road, female comic, and these guys come to the shows in, no offense, Scratch Your Ass, Arkansas, but let's just say that's where I was performing, yeah. and they're like, with their, you know, wives who, they look like the same person practically, and they're complaining that like, ah, I want to get someone a little younger, a little fresh, hey, give me some, what, take care of yourself first, you know what I mean? Who are you oh, to, heal to, yeah, to, to mm -hmm. say your wife isn't doing it for you? Yeah. You're not doing it for anybody. <laughs> right. So let's look at yourself first. That was a very Oprah-esque kind of. That was of... a little bit of like Man in the Mirror. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. that was good. MJ. So you're saying to those guys, when you point the finger, yeah. you have three fingers pointing back at you. Exactly. What I say is that I also have my thumb kind of pointing at you, which is worth two <laughs> fingers, so and it's even. And your penis is pointing, usually. Yeah, I'm pointing. Because you're chronic. And my chin. Your yeah. chin is pointing out. <laughs> yeah, but I got nipples. And I got uh, three, I got three nipples, so somebody, boom. When you, when you do that, it works. When I do this. It really works for me. Take a look at yourself first. <laughs> yeah. yeah, control yourself, you two, Jesus. We I did, that's why I'm suing Astroglide. Yeah. <laughs> do you think there's any uh, any truth to that, this porn, all this endless porn, that it might be doing something? Let me tell you something like, about, let me just say this about porn. He's an expert. Yeah. I, I knew there was, I started taking Propecia like about eight months, maybe a year ago now. And so I started taking it, and they say it lowers your libido, and I was like, ah, I could use a little lowering. We could, yeah, you that know? would be a benefit. Most <laughs> yeah, yeah. I get some shit done finally, right? <laughs> and because uh, you know, I used to say I, I used to be able to do uh, anyway. It doesn't matter. 
But my point is, so then I did notice a decreased libido to the point where I was like, well, I haven't even looked at porn for the last two weeks. I was like, wow. some, and that made me like, whoa. And that's why I went off it. So I'm off wow. it now. And my, and my libido did come back. Cause it did scare me like, oh my God, what am I getting this hair for if I am not even my human being anymore? Right. Because and you I, only want to masturbate with a full head of hair. That is correct. Is that the point? I but think. it's bad. I went off the back to the shampoo. Back to the shampoo, yeah. orgasm. And the sex drive came right back. I mean, it came back almost double. I'm so horny now that I want to fuck my wife. Anyway, wow. I'm telling That's you, weird. that is weird. I That's know. That's weird. Well, I think we should limit porn to one hour a day. Yeah. <laughs> Just like the news. <laughs> Just like the news. It could be Just one. Just like the okay, news. Okay, but I could break it up into like four minute segments. No, I don't it, think I'm. No, uh, come no, on. The way no. you're, it's you an hour one. straight from yeah. 11 to 12. Yeah. The everyone porn time. That's when we get our porn, when we get our news or whatever, you know? You know and I that's think, it. I think you're onto something here. Maybe right? in the future, everything's gonna be done in little time increments. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like now power. with Twitter, we can only type in 140 characters. In the future, you'll have a half hour for porn, yeah. half hour for the news. Like everything will be broken if down. If you're in France, you get to be anti-Semitic for, for one hour <laughs> in a day. Yeah. And that's <laughs> it, France. Yeah, that's control it. yourself, France. All right, El Fien, <laughs> okay? El Fien on this segment. All right. Uh, let's talk about Chris Christie because uh, uh, he's probably running in 2016. Actually, a lot of the Democrats like that because he seems to kind of be one of them. But the only way he'll be able to do it is if he can get through the Republican primaries. And of course, the Republican primaries are a bunch of right wing nut jobs who are still anti gay and that whole thing. Now, Christie himself has never really come out for gay marriage. He's actually vetoed things uh, and done things anti uh, gay in the state of New Jersey. Um, and the problem is that he's gonna have to keep doing that if he wants to get out of the Republican Party, even though I think in his heart of hearts, he probably really isn't that anti-gay. And he said that if the people voted on it, uh, he would respect their decision. Of course, you shouldn't leave the uh, rights of a minority up to a majority, blah, blah, blah. Uh, is this uh, idea of, of gay marriage in 2016, will this have just disappeared by then? Because it seems like now with DOMA and everything that maybe, I haven't even tweeted about gay stuff in about two weeks. Well, Maybe we're actually getting there, and the, the, the primary is still gonna screw it up, of course. Yes, see, that's the problem. See, you're saying we're gonna, it, it will matter because I don't see the Republican platform changing in 2016. That's no good. The pla they will still be anti-gay in So if, if yes. they're anti-gay, so then all of them have to go to the right to go with that, and then yeah. you get a damaged candidate, basically. Right. What, what, yeah, so what Chris Christie's been saying is, you know, we put it up to the vote of the people, which, of course, that's exactly the opposite, and he knows that. And, and he's that's not how democracy works, actually. You, you vote on things, but you don't put other people's, people's rights. rights. Right, you yeah. don't, right, exactly. You yeah. vote on a constitution that ensures people's rights. You don't vote on people's right. rights. Yeah. Okay. I'm, yeah. But Chris Christie, the more he's in the spotlight, I think it's great, because he's getting revealed to be the empty, as, you know, as big as he is, he's just an empty shell of a human, he's, he's duplicitous, he's hypocritical, he's self-serving, he's every horrible thing you hate about a politician, it's Chris Christie. So, with that said, uh, is something like this, where the Democrats love this guy, because, you know, he goes uh, with Obama and they put their arms around each other yeah. after Sandy and yeah. all that, is he really, though, as uh, big of a shell, and uh, big, no pun intended, uh -huh. Like really because he, on something like gay marriage, which so has shifted and the numbers have shifted yeah. and, it's, and the, the, hit, the wave has already begun, this thing's over, is he really just showing what a pandering fool he is because, or just coward, he's really being a coward on this, right? Mm -hmm. You know, everyone's saying that he, he's worried about the swing votes. And I think that, first of all, if there's anyone out there that is a swing voter, you, you're an Idiot. At this I'm point. At this point, because the parties have told you what they are. And if you're like, mm, I don't know, I think aborted fetuses should go to jail. You know what I mean? Like, you're just yeah. an idiot. So he's, yeah. but he's worried about the swing vote now. So I think that's why he's swinging. He's going left, right. Mm -hmm. He's saying whatever is in the wind. He's, he's kind of like that one, uh, that one drunk uncle you have, when he's not drinking, you're like, oh, <laughs> Sandy, there he, <laughs> there he is, what a sweet guy. And, the, and the, he helped out, by the way, get all your dogs after Sandy. Please get Sandy. <laughs> Please get your hurricane, back, Sandy people. dogs. But, um, and then he has a couple of, uh, you know, off the Republican wine, and he starts to flip out, and you know, he's drunk the punch, obviously, and he, he goes back and forth so much that I think what's gonna happen is he's gonna get very confused and 
be uh, made, I think you're right, be made kind of made fun of. Yeah, so is the problem here, is the problem just that our system does this? So on, on one side, you have to be completely anti-gay to get through, just right. to get through the primaries. Mm -hmm. I remember all those lunatics we had. I mean, to think that Michelle Bachman and Rick Santorum, that they were actually considered presidential material at one time, it's crazy. But even on the, on the other side, even on the other side, you have to be sort of <laughs> over the, yeah, Mitt Romney, <laughs> exactly. But even on the other side, you have to be uh, almost at this point, like over the top for abortion. Like there's right. no, there's no middle ground anymore. Like right. I don't really like abortion, but if we give access, then maybe women will have abortions when it's early. Like no one really has any sort of decent. Can we decent just let the doctor and the woman decide what yeah. the hell right. is the best thing? Can we just stop that? trying to pretend that we can get in between? And that's the big, again, big hypocrites. We're all for privacy, the government off our back, except right. in the most intimate thing possible. They want it so they, small yeah. it can fit in a woman's uterus. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. He's going to get so confused because he probably has people talking in his ear. Here's what you have to do. We're going to start priming you for the presidential election. You're going to go on crossfire because it's coming yeah. back. Uh -huh. And, you know, and I think he's Call just going to be yes. just, he's, you know what I mean? He's just going to get all tangled up in yeah. himself. Well, let's look at some, uh, some numbers about gay marriage and what's going on here. Uh, so in 2012, evangelical conservatives, who usually oppose gay marriage, obviously, made up 57% of the Republican caucus goers uh, in this Iowa. Is this is in word. Iowa. Caucus goers? Caucus goers. Right? I've been to that club. Right. It's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> and then in a poll taken a month after the 2012 caucuses, 64% of Republicans favored a constitutional amendment banning same-sex marriage. Now, again, this is a year ago and things have changed because of DOMA, so the numbers are trending differently. Four years ago, 37% of America's Americans favored same-sex marriage were at 51% and that's going up. And Iowans, and that's where the first, uh, the first caucus is, uh, favor gay marriage 49 where it's legal. to 42%. It's where, where it is legal, yeah. exactly. So even- and that's why, I mean, have you been to Iowa? It's just like Sodom and Gomorrah down there. <laughs> it's horrible. It's unbelievable. Horrible. What Their whole doing society with the is ball. falling apart. Yeah. It's horrible. Marriages, people are getting divorced now because the gays have ruined. Uh, they're threatening uh, straight marriage. Yeah. I'll has that you, ever I'll been? I'll tell you yeah. what has ruined. Honestly, I'll tell you how gay people have threatened straight marriage. This is 100% true. I went to a gay wedding, and these two motherfuckers. <laughs> what did they do? It was the best wedding I've ever made. My wedding look like a trip to Trader Joe's. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and I was like, no more gay weddings. That is it. What, what, what was the most? Oh, like? are you serious? Uh, All the appetizers, uh, and they had like a thing, a little uh, a flowy bar, and the oyster shells, and they did a whole thing, and then the entertainment that came in, and the centerpieces. And the centerpieces. The are yeah. you serious? Right. They did lights with their initials in the thing uh -huh. with the. The dance floor and uh, the band was amazing. Oh, so is that what no, this is I'm really done. about? That's, I'm done. So you guys ban them. So you straight people, you <laughs> traditionalists, as we call you, yeah. are you guys just afraid we're gonna just take this marriage thing and make it so freaking great and it'll expose the fraud yes. of straight yes. marriage? Yes. yes. Are you happy? Kind yes. of. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we're gonna wow. sue you. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get my the Tennessee gays. lawyer I'm suing the gays. and I'm going to start suing the gays yes. for being so fabulous. I'm yeah. tired exactly. of it. I'm suing the gays for being gay. Just yeah. for being happy. And I mean happy. happy. Yeah, yeah. Just I'm what I mean. sick and tired of it. Have sick. you? I went to a gay barbecue last week. Okay. If, gay you, guys bar are, uh, if gay you guys barbecue. are watching. Gay barbecue. Yeah, <laughs> Tim and Steve, if you're watching, which I hope they are, um, over it. Great food, great conversation. Amazing. Yeah. I, pff, I was like, forget it. You know what? That is true because I just got a grill and I've been having people over for barbecues. You both are welcome anytime. And I realized no, thank between you. The, my boyfriend's an incredible chef. No, thank I you. make a hell of a drink. I make mojitos. It's all fresh ingredients. Oh, they, they yeah. Watermelon you guys drink mojitos. light beer. What's wrong with uh, you people? No, I drink a scotch. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> but scotch. That's a very. Gay people don't drink scotch. Do they? I don't know. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, Glenn uh, Livin is my drinking choice. But oh. how, what do you make? I make a nice rib. I make ribs on the grill really do nicely. You? Yeah. Really? Do you know how to do it? Yeah, we had ribs this he, week. How'd it go? He's good. He's good. Really? I mean, it's a rub and a slow and, and I go slow and low. I don't know how anybody else does. Oh, of course, of course. I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> slow and low. <laughs> and I you got have nice, set the record for callbacks so and ruined the show. No, it's, I'll stop it. I'll no, stop. that's it's good. slow and low, but only after a nice rub. Between 11 and 12. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, I don't even know what that segment was about anymore. I'm honestly not even sure. All right, one more for you. So robots, I've been talking about this since I was in like third grade. They are going to take over one day and that day is coming. So DARPA, this is the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. That sounds pretty fancy. Uh, they have built a new six foot two, 330 pound disaster robot. And what they're gonna do with this thing is send it into uh, like the uh, nuclear disaster in Japan where humans can't go, or if there is a uh, earthquake and they have to send, you know, and it's gonna do things that humans can't do or are, it's too dangerous for humans to do. Uh, let's look at a little videotape and then we will analyze the robots. <laughs> All right, it, oh, I mean, it is so obvious to me, this is, they're going to take over. This is every science fiction movie that I've ever loved from 2001, I, Robot, The Matrix. I mean, we're gonna build these things and then or Terminator, they're gonna be our masters. So I guess my first question is, will you be a, a loyal servant to your robot overlord? I will destroy all robots. <laughs> you're, you're gonna be Will Smith and yes, I, Robot. Yes, I will be destroying all robots with my trusted rescue dog. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, I could call back. And uh, <laughs> yeah, you're not the only one who's gonna go. Like but that it. was amazing, you know. But you know they're gonna put some tits and a vagina on those. And oh some yeah. guys are gonna be fucking it pretty soon. I you know that's so. gonna be happening. It's gonna be a robot with a gut and a <laughs> robot mullet with a t-shirt that says "No fat chicks, no fat, no fat robots." <laughs> that's actually really hilarious. So you know no because it's all nerdy men that yeah. are making these yeah. robots. So they're gonna make hot chicks for yeah. them to bang, of and course. then all the male robots are gonna be these fat losers because. Right. They don't want any competition. Yeah, no, absolutely. But really, do you think, I, I'm so convinced that within our lifetimes really? that these robots are gonna take over. Take we're gonna, over in what way? We're just gonna create things that are stronger than us, smarter than us. They're gonna slowly get, we, they won't need us. All they need is our brains. And once they have that, brains. then yeah, it's Terminator, man, it's real. Wow, so you think the future is here? The future is here. The future, future. was yesterday. Wow. wow. I don't know where we are now. Can I pitch you guys a show? Don't steal it. Yes. Okay, okay. Well. and none of your viewers should steal it. Okay. okay. Robot Court. Oh, where the Robo jury court, sure. is all robots. Ooh. Because then we can't hate, you know, jury number B572 or whatever. Right. That, um, because they've been programmed to understand everything exactly been, yeah, and no and antithetical logic. Everything. All yeah. the logic goes into them and they spit out, they have like a, you know, a jury app, whatever. Yeah. And, uh, and it's just robot juries. That's how we're going to use them. But what about the problem of now, like when the, ro when the robot's owner dies or there's a hurricane and there's all the homeless robots? Homeless the robots. robots. There's the robo hobos, the what I like to call them. <laughs> Homeless robots, who's gonna feed you them? I just wanted to say robo homo. Yes, I wrote that yeah. joke backwards. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. And then robosexuals. I mean, there's a lot yeah. of things. There's a lot of things that we and have to do. Robosexuals should, under civil laws, they should have equality. They should, and be, they yeah. should be able to get married. They, but, marriage equality goes for robots. Come on. It, there was a great episode of Futurama no all kidding. about that. That yes, humans there was. were trying to uh, marry robots. No and, kidding. You know, it's a slippery slope because if two dudes can marry, then why can't a guy and a dog? Oh, marry? I get to marry my or, dog. On a robot. Now. All right, let's not go back to gay marriage. But really, am I being am I being completely nuts? When you see something like that, do you not see that as just like the future and these things are gonna be They're walking gonna around over, amongst us and, and take over? And stuff. Yeah, the, driving cars, the whole thing. Oh, well, our car will be a robot, so uh -uh. yeah. Uh -uh. Well, um, our Kabam. cars are already computers. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, we've already, I feel like transcended that. Yeah. Um, I, I do feel that once the robots learn how to use guns, <laughs> Um, oh boy. And, and give abortions, and then we have an OBGY robot, um, OBG Bob, but, uh, then yes, it will get dangerous. But as long as we can still, as humans, walk over to the robot and press and power, I feel okay. So you right? want a big power button. As long as there's a big power button. Yeah. Or a remote, because what if they're far away and we're fat and we're lazy and we're Americans, we yeah. just want to use our remote to get the robot. We shake the batteries a little bit and we just turn them off. I think it's like the clapper. We just go <laughs> and then, Yeah. 
<laughs> but don't, I mean, I'm sure you guys have both seen The Matrix and Terminator. Yes. I mean, doesn't it seem like they'll just go to, it'll get to a point where they just won't need us anymore. That we'll, our, all of our ways of hating each other and the waste of energy and resources, robots will be like, well, they created us, but we don't need those freaks anymore. Well, they'd be, X will be able to think. And that's the whole thing. Like Siri, I have conversations with Siri. Yeah. And it's, uh, yeah, obviously she's programmed to say, quit calling me a bitch. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> But I don't know if computers will ever get to the point where they can actually think. You know, like in 2001, where the computer, I don't think it'll ever get to where they can think. Well, it's not necessarily that they'll think the way we think, but that they'll build them in such a way that their logic uh, will ultimately be like, well, humans are no longer necessary. Right. That they're gonna build a system that is so uh, logical and, and humans aren't you. logical. A bunch of Spocks with- What will happen is, yeah. we will be, humans will turn into the Middle East and robots will be America and we'll always have oil that they need. <laughs> oh. And so they will be dependent on us for oh. Ever. So no matter oh, what we do, they're okay. always going to be like, well, we're a slave to the Middle East. Okay. Did I just but imagine those blow robots. your mind? Yeah, she's giving me a lot to think about here. Robot porn. Robot porn. <laughs> robot on robot action. Yeah. It's a lot. But seriously, if we always have something that they need, right? right then they will always be beholden to us. Right. That's just and like that's, a woman. Just yeah, like a woman. That's yep, exactly. That's true. <laughs> exactly what I was going to say. All right. Well, on that note, great show, guys. Thanks for oh, coming thank in. You. I'm going to let you guys pimp yourselves out directly to the camera. Kira, I want you to talk to number two. Okay, number two. How are you? That's a robot. That camera. is a robot. I, I am uh, Kira at Kira Comedy. If you want to tweet something anti-Semitic to me from France, oh. feel free. <laughs> and um, I have a podcast the Mother Funny Show, uh, motherfunnyshow.com. So check it out. Oh, and I didn't know about that podcast. Yes. I'm not a mother. You're not a mother, but you are funny. You Thank are you. one funny mother funny. I also have a show here on the Young Turks Network called the Jimmy Dore Show. It's good to YouTube slash TYT comedy, and you can check out that show. All right, well, thank you guys, and thank you guys for watching. We have so much to think about now between robots and dogs and gays and oh my. Uh, subscribe, there's a big red button down there. They just changed it, you can't miss it. Click it, and then uh, this will just come right to you. Can you ask for anything more simple or fantastic? I don't think so. All right, we'll do it again next week, thanks.